and welcome to another episode of Script to Screen. This is a talk show devoted to local filmmakers and writers of the Iowa City area. I'm your host, Mark Bauer. Today I'm joined by Liz Dankel, who recently graduated from the University of Iowa. So welcome, Liz. Thank you. Um, what did you get your degree in? Um, I actually got a degree in um, studio art, a bachelor's degree. And I minored in film, and I got a certificate in creative writing. So uh, which interests would you say you've been doing the longest? Was it your art? Yeah, I've, um, I've been in love with art since I was really young. Um, in high school, I came to the U to, um, University of Iowa just studying studio art. And that's what I was really planning to do for a long time. But I guess I felt... Um, uncertain about it. I couldn't really figure out what exactly in art I wanted to do. Um, and I knew I loved writing too, so I eventually figured out storytelling was really where I wanted to go. So then I started focusing on film. So before uh, college, you did art in high school, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, were you writing back then? <clears throat> yeah, I was. And um, I didn't really think much of writing like I didn't think I was very good or anything. Um, my the high school I went to was really fine arts based. It had a really good fine arts program, and I was really focused on art. I took AP Studio Art as a senior in high school. Um, but the moment that it clicked with me that I was okay at writing at least was on a whim. I submitted a short story I wrote to um, the National Scholastic Competition. And I ended up winning um, national gold wow. for it. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that's the moment it kind of clicked with me. I was like, oh, I guess I'm OK at writing. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many people were in competition for that? Oh, yeah, a lot of people. It's for um, students in high school. I think maybe, I don't know if it starts at 13 or 14 um, through age 18 who can enter. And you can enter for art as well. And I had entered for art. And I never won. I entered for art every year of high school, and I never won once. And that was really disappointing, especially because a lot of my friends won in art. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of discouraging. And then um, in a creative writing class I took, I asked my teacher, hey, do you think the story I wrote is good enough to submit? And he actually gave me really good advice. I'm glad he told this to me. He said, I don't want to tell you whether it's good or bad, because it, Maybe if I tell you it's good it, and it won't win, you'll feel conflicted about it. If I tell you it's bad, then you won't even enter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said, I'll just tell you to enter. <laughs> and I did, and I won. <laughs> so it was good encouragement. <laughs> did you uh, experiment or do any other sort of writing, like you did a short story? Did you touch on any other genres, like nonfiction or? I actually wrote a play in high school. It was collaborative. I wrote it with a friend. Um, and it, it was a really good experience because we submitted it to our high school student play festival. And we got to see it performed. Um, and that's the only time I've ever written a play. But it was a lot of fun. And it was super fun to see it performed. It was about the game Clue. Mm -hmm. And it was called Clueless. <laughs> so it was funny. It was a funny play. And it was even funnier live. So. It was good to see. Had you had any theater experience or were you involved in that community at all? I tried to be. <laughs> um, my high school had an intense theater department as well as the art department. And um, I wanted to act, but I, I, um, I couldn't sing. I can't sing still. <laughs> so that put a damper on everything because um, we did a lot of musicals. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and also, you had to get into the acting department at my school basically as a freshman, or else you probably would never get in. Yeah. So I couldn't get into it. I tried. I was in a play in eighth grade in middle school, um, but that's my only acting experience. I would act, but I don't know. I haven't had the experience, so I don't think I'm that good. <laughs> uh, so when you came to college, you took some writing classes mm -hmm. here. 
Uh, did you take more of a variety? Was it still short stories and nonfiction, or <coughs> did you even do some poetry at all? Yeah, well, um, the first class I took was just creative writing workshop. And we did kind of an overview of like a couple different genres of writing. Um, I did write some poems for that class, um, wrote some fiction, and I'm pretty sure I wrote a nonfiction piece as well. It was a really good class overall, um, just a good general writing class, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I feel I can't write poetry. <laughs> I feel um, whenever I write it, I feel too pretentious about it. Like, I just feel I'm trying too hard or yeah. something about it. So I just don't really, I never really try my hand at poetry. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish I could, because I do, I admire poetry that people write. Especially, I love spoken word. I have some friends who do spoken word, and like, I love it, but I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, and more fiction than nonfiction. Mm -hmm. I guess only because I never really know what to write for nonfiction. I never really want to write about myself. Yeah. And so then otherwise I'm not really sure what to write about, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had a nonfiction writing class together. Yeah. And I remember coming into that like the first day our instructor said, you need to write about like raw stuff that yeah. like, if it makes you upset and uncomfortable, you're probably doing it right. Yeah. And I remember leaving that class like, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I liked that class. It was a yeah. good class, but I had a hard time figuring out what to write about, really, because I didn't mm -hmm. want to write about me. <laughs> but I did. But yours was really funny. You wrote about dance in high school, right? Yeah. And an unfortunate picture that was yeah. taken of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a good class. Yeah, and I think uh, I gained a, an appreciation for writing about myself and being introspective yeah. and things like that. Yeah, same. I felt I learned a lot, definitely, mm -hmm. but also learned that I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you, when you came in, had you taken a workshop class before? Or was it really just at the university where you started those? <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I took uh, one my junior year of high school. But, you know, that was a high school writing class. So it was, it was really good. That's the class that I wrote the story that I won a National Scholastic Award for. Um, so I think that was, that was my first writing class really ever. Um, I had done writing on my own, learned through example, really, until then. So I guess in a way, yes, um, writing classes in college were really the first step. But technically, had my first one in high school. <laughs> and um, how did you feel about like the workshop style? Because you, you're essentially you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. Your peers are reading this. They're going to tell you what they think of it, like it or not. So. Yeah, it's weird. I guess just because of. Um, how I, I've grown in college. I was totally fine with it in my freshman year and into my sophomore year. I liked workshop classes. Um, and I had like absolutely no issues sharing my work. I was always, always excited about it. And then like as the years passed, like I got more and more nervous about it and I stopped liking it. Like I really, I enjoy critique and I, I think I need it definitely, but like I didn't like being put on the spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I think kind of what happened was um, I started to like because you kind of have a confidence when you start getting into something. You have a confidence because you don't really know like what it's all about yet. So mm -hmm. you think like, oh, I'm pretty good, but you haven't really seen the world of it yet. <laughs> so that's how I think it was with writing, like. I was like, I'm pretty good at writing. I won an award. <laughs> um, but then <clears throat> coming to the writing university of like the US, I started to see like, I guess I'm not, you know, I'm kind of one fish in the sea here. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> so I'm really humble. So I think that added to it. I was, I lost some like the confidence I had as a beginner. <laughs> Uh, what about your revision process? So you get critiques back. Um, do you 
tend to listen to all of them or just some of them or how do you, how do you reapproach a piece? Yeah, um, that's a good question because um, it's, I feel like in college classes you have to pick and choose <laughs> what criticism you listen to because I think some people give good criticism and others not so much. Um, so typically I listen to people I know, like I trust are good writers and give good advice. Um, mm -hmm. Or if like the majority of the class said something, um, I listen to the majority. Uh, or when it comes down to it, I'll listen to the teacher yeah. <laughs> over everyone. I've had a couple times, um, one, one time when we were in Ireland studying abroad in one of the classes with, I forget her name, the lady teacher. Oh, Katie Hayes. Katie Hayes. In Katie's, Katie Hayes' class, um, I know uh, like one or two people were telling me so, I, something about the piece I wrote. I can't even remember what it was. And she just took me aside after class and was like, don't change that. <laughs> Just don't listen to them. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I, I listened to the teacher above mm -hmm. everyone else. <laughs> so you brought up uh, the Irish writing program. <laughs> yes. Uh, we had two different teachers, two workshops, mm -hmm. uh, a longer piece, mm -hmm. and then shorter assignments. Uh, what would you say you learned from each, and what did you like better? Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, I liked both classes. Uh, I don't know if I learned more in one than I did in the other. I think definitely Katie Hayes' class compared to Mr. Roper. Um, in Katie Hayes' class, I, uh, that was my first experience really focusing on writing voice. Mm -hmm. I had never focused on it so hard like that. Even though I had written first person a lot before, I realized in that class that I was not good at writing first person. <laughs> Because I never thought about voice. I just wrote with, like, I did this. I did that. Mm -hmm. So that was a good learning experience. Um, something I consider now if I write first person, which I don't do as often now. Yeah. <laughs> I lost the confidence in it, like I said earlier. Um, but I enjoyed both classes a lot. And they were, I mean, we were just surrounded. Everyone was great at writing. So yeah. it was such a good experience to be with those people and have feedback from everyone. And both teachers were fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it was a great experience. Uh, what have you written <laughs> since the trip or what's something you've been working on recently? Well, I spent my last semester in school writing a novella as an independent project. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I actually wrote a piece that I started in Ireland in Katie Hayes' cl class. Um, it's, a, it's called Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit is the title. And it's a novella, like I said. Um, it got to like just over 18,000 words. So it's actually kind of an unconventional length. I think novellas are typically 20,000 maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I did submit it to some magazines, and but they take you know a couple months to reply. Sure. So now I wait, see if anything happens. I'm not like, you know, I don't have my hopes up. <laughs> At least I'm trying not to have my hopes up. Mm -hmm. It'd be really cool if it, they accepted it, but um, I don't know. I don't think they will. <laughs> honestly, to be pessimistic about it. <laughs> But it was a good experience. Um, do you think you'll work on it some more in the meantime then? or? No, I've put it aside. Okay. I worked on it too long. I mean, not too long, but it's kind of finished in my mind. I feel I could definitely go back in sometime, someday, and tweak things. Um, I actually, it's beneficial to me to go back to old writing and fix it so um, when it looks new to me, mm -hmm. I'm not so familiar with it because I think then I have a more objective look at how to fix things, things that need fixing. So maybe I'll come back to it someday if um, I get rejected from both publishing places and 
I'm like, well, I can make this better or something. Um, I had a mentor for the project when I was writing it, and she was great. She was really helpful, told me a lot of really good things. Um, and she told me, she's the one who told me to start looking to publish it, because she thought it was complete, really. And she told me she didn't even think there was anything I could cut. So that also kind of holds me back, like, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> it's done with, I'm done with it. <laughs> Well, I'm pulling for you, and Thank I hope you. you get that out there. Thank you. Um, you also told me that you've been working on a novel. Uh, so what's that experience been like as opposed to shorter works? Yeah. Uh, it's way more complicated. It's mm -hmm. scary. Um, I've actually been working on my novel for uh, probably six-ish years, which sounds like a lot, and sounds like I should be done. Mm -hmm. but. The truth is, I have not really even started writing it. Yeah. I've been working on it for six years, but just developing it, like creating it, really. Mm -hmm. um, creating the characters. Um, I created the characters when I was really young. I actually created them probably more around when I was like 13. Wow. And then I um, kind of went back to it when I was in like m the middle of high school. And I thought, I could do something with these characters. They need updating, obviously, because you create terrible characters at age 13. Yeah. And in middle school, mm -hmm. they weren't like, I made them better. But now I think they're in their top form, <laughs> especially after I studied writing um, in college. And uh, so I think that has contributed to the long process. Like I was kind of waiting to fully realize my skills in writing um, and uh, fully realize my understanding of developing characters and plot mm -hmm. because it has evolved a lot over those six years and I think I think now it is at the point where I can write it and I have started writing it and it's like made it even worse like more complicated <laughs> because I think I write really unconventionally novel wise um, I kind of see things in my head and I like write parts of it, like not in order. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most like conventional novel writing strategy I've used is um, I've made like a timeline of events and uh, started kind of doing a more detailed timeline of events that I still need to finish. Um, I think my issue is I have the entire beginning planned out and the entire ending planned out, but the middle is kind of in mm -hmm. a blank page. Sure. <laughs> so that's where it's at right now. Do you take kind of, um, I don't know, it was explained to me like driving on a dark road at night without the lights on where you don't <laughs> know what's happening next, but you just keep on writing and see what happens? Or do you have a much more planned out, this is how this chapter is going to go? I don't have it planned by chapter. Yeah. <laughs> I just have it planned as the plot, like this is what will happen. Um, so yeah, I guess I am kind of driving blind, um, mm -hmm. but I think that's how I write best, honestly. I think I cannot plan too much going mm -hmm. into something, because I think my best ideas come in the middle of when I'm working on something. Um, I, that was kind of um, solidified for me when I wrote my novella. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know how I was going to end it the entire semester. Um, and so I finally figured it out, like at, when I sat down and was like, I'm gonna write the ending right now. And so it came to me like in that moment when I was right, trying to sit down and write it. So, and I think, it's, I think it's a good ending. I think it's kind of what I wanted all along. Mm -hmm. But I, so that's I think how I need to write, which is sad to me because I like being organized. Yeah. But, I think I just need to like sit down and write stuff and like things will come to me and then edit it later. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, aside from writing, you also uh, are a film minor. Yes. And so what have you done uh, with filmmaking? Have you done any screenwriting? I've tried. I didn't take any screenwriting classes. Um, so I'm trying to learn on my own now. Uh, I have ideas for things I want to write. Mm -hmm. for in script form, not necessarily a movie, but 
I have ideas for like TV, television shows I want to um, write, but I haven't really started them. They're just ideas that I have in this little idea notebook that I've been planning. Um, and I'm also, I'm planning a, uh, a pitch for a cartoon actually with some friends. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't be on um, TV, but would be on Cartoon Hangover, which is on YouTube. Okay. And basically they take one-shot cartoon pitches. And if they like it enough, they turn it into a show. Um, which it's happened to a couple cartoons. Um, but yeah, I some friends and I are working on that in between our busy schedules. Um, and I they kind of placed me as, um, I guess, like the the producer. <laughs> The producer, te technically, um, I keep I'm keeping everything together. Obviously, we're building the plot and characters together, but they want me to be the one to pitch it to them if we get the chance. And it's fun, though. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, done any work with cartoons or animation then? Yeah, um, I used to be an admin on a animation website in high school that is no longer actually it closed because they didn't have the money to keep it open. Um, so I kind of was self-taught in animation and then I also took an animation class in college, learned a little more um, and I really love animation. I love animated film and television. Um, so I, I mean that's why I've been interning at an animation studio and it's, it's really great. Um, but on my own, I've really just dabbled in animation, but I would I still say I have a passion for it, just not like the technical skill of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so what have you been doing at this internship? Um, I'm technically a production assistant intern, and uh, it's at Grass Horse Animation Studios, which is in Winfield, Iowa. And they're really great. It's a lot of fun. Um, and they do commercial advertising, but they specialize in character animation. And really, I've just been kind of assisting the head producer, Kathy. Um, I just, I basically shadow her. Um, and I help her um, with general businessy things that sound really not fun like mm -hmm. press releases and like talking to clients. Um, but we also um, kind of wa watch what everyone is doing in the studio, um, giving some critiques and feedback of the projects they're working on. Um, and then also, since I'm an intern, I'm paired with the other interns on top of that. Um, and I, the group of us, it's me, a production assistant intern, there's six animation interns um, and one sound engineer intern. And we are going to make a 30 second commercial, animated commercial. And so I'm the producer for it. And so basically, so far that's just been me telling the other interns what to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we're not very far in the process at the moment. We um, we pitched our script to our clients, which is the, our bosses. It's kind of a mock real world thing. Mm -hmm. And they just accepted our script. They didn't like the first one, so we had to redo it. But they liked our second script, so we're going with that one. Um, and now we're solidifying character designs and um, kind of the aesthetic we're going for and uh, style sheets. Um, and that will come together next week, and then we'll move on to storyboards. So that's it right now. <laughs> um, is there a place where people can eventually watch this? Or? Uh, yeah, I think it should be on YouTube. Okay. I'm hoping we finish it. We're going to see how far we get, really. Um, but we only have until the end of July. Okay. So, and that's a really short time mm -hmm. to make this. But we're going to get as far as we can. I'm sure no matter what, it will be on the Grass Horse website but, or on YouTube. Okay. Uh, so where do you hope to go next after this internship? 
I don't know. It's really up in the air, which is scary. Um, I, I hope to get advice from um, my bosses at Grass Horse on next steps I could take. Um, and I would love for them to hire me as well. I would love to continue working for them as their production assistant. Um, but I don't know if that will happen. Um, but otherwise, if they don't hire me, I would love to hear their advice, like I said. Um, because they, they have a lot of experience in the industry and they know a lot of people. So I think they would have good things to tell me. Um, but otherwise, I'll probably go home to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and try to set something up. I did start networking with some people in film there, and uh, hopefully something could happen. <laughs> That's really, it's, it's a big mystery, mm -hmm. which is sad, but I hope to continue on in something in film so I can just continue being on track to where I want to be in a career. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you'll do writing on the side then? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a dream of mine to publish the novel I'm working on. I fantasize about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I fantasize about it getting published and being popular. So, you know, I'm going to work really hard on that. Um, it's become harder now because I don't have like deadlines for that or anything. So uh, I had to make my own deadlines, <laughs> force myself to work on it. Um, but I'll definitely be writing on the side, hopefully on that and on other things, um, scripts to pitch, just so I have them. Okay, uh, so one last thing. Uh, do you have any advice for anyone looking to get into film or writing? Mm -hmm. um, networking. Networking is the key to everything really any job, <laughs> any career right now. Um, network all you can, and then always have something to show people, mm -hmm. writing-wise. Always have writing that you would be willing to share with someone. And maybe go to like some public readings or definitely, definitely, screenings yeah. where you might meet some people. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Liz, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, did you have a good time? Yes. Okay, glad to hear it. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Script to Screen. Join us next time.